This is an extra video in our series of databases in Delphi. We've done a few videos about how we can interact with the database from Delphi environment. We've done like for example how you can edit and insert and delete records, how you can go through the database and extract data. And one of our more popular videos has been the one how do we can actually do the connection, how we get Delphi to see the database and how we can interact with it. So this video is going to do exactly the same thing as we did in that video where we added components like the ADO connection and so on. The difference in this video is that we're actually not going to drag those components onto a data module. We're actually going to create them dynamically. So basically we're going to do the connection using code. So we're not going to put any components on. We're just going to use code to create these components and to do the connection that way. It's a little bit more stable. It's a little bit easier to use. And so at many times during this video, you might want to pause the video so that you can see the code so that you can replicate it. If you don't know dynamic objects very well yet, uh, maybe you haven't covered it yet, um, it's okay, you can still watch the video, just, just believe what it, what's happening, but there is a series on dynamic objects that we do have if you want to understand how to create components using code. So let's get into it. So yeah, I have my program and I want to be able to connect to it via a database or connect to a database to from this side, from the Delphi environment. Um, so the first thing, like I did in the last video, I'm going to add basically a data module. So I'm going to go file, new, and add an other. And then we're going to look for the Delphi files and look for the data module. So there we go. So I've got this data module. So there's this little block here, the basic, basic part of it. And right here, we have the code for the data module. I'm actually going to give this a particular name. And I'm going to call this uh, DM. We've got a, it's basically a, a CD um, database. So I'm going to call this DMCD underscore U. Okay, so there's my DMCD underscore U. And I'm going to file and save this in the folder with all my, da my database stuff, all the other files for this program up here. And I'm going to save it there and think it's in the right place. There we go. We can call this the exact same name, DMCD underscore U. Make sure that it's the same name as that. Okay, so I've created my data module and I just want to give my data module a nice little name over here. So let's give it a nice little name. Now I'm going to call it data module. This isn't a great name, data module CD. Um, DM would be a better name, but I want to know that, so you can see the difference between this block over here, the actual data module and the actual unit file for the code. I want you to be able to tell the difference between the two. So that that's what we've created so far. Now we're going to create our objects dynamically and we're going to make them public what that means if they're public it means that other units that are connected to this data module will be able to see them if i make them private then only this module can see them but we want to connect from this point from this unit one so unit one must be able to see them so therefore we're going to make them public so we need a couple of things we need um but actually before that actually we need to be able to use those components so we need to add the ADODB library file and the DB library file. So those are the files that you must add at the top there. Just give it time to catch up. There we go. So that's actually our first step. So we're going to add the ADODB and DB to our library files so that we can have access to the different components like the ADO connection and the ADO table. And then under public, this is our second step. This is where we're going to declare, I do declare my objects. And for that, we, it's very similar to what we would have done in the previous video, where we just dragged these components on, but I'm going to have a connection for my CD, so connection CD, which is of top T ADO connection. And I'm going to need a ADO table, so I'm going to call this ADO CD, which is a T ADO table. And then I need a data source, so data source CD which is of type T, A, D, not T, A, D, T data source. Okay, so we are going to do a connection to the database and this, so this is going to connect to the database, if you remember correctly. And then the ADO table is going to connect to the table in the database. And then the data source will connect to any other components that we want to interact with the ADO table. If you've got multiple tables, you might want to create multiple ADO tables, but you only need one connection if it's one database. So that is our first step. We've created our components there. Fantastic. Now we can move on to when do we want these, when this connection to, to occur. 
and I'm going to come here to the data module over here when this data module I want to go to its events uh, on the create we'd say when the uh, data module setup I'll call it data module setup boom or database setup no that's fine data module setup I'm happy with that name okay so this is what the code is going to happen when it gets created so what do we want to do well we've so we've created our components we've declared our deployment components we've added the library files now we want to actually create or instantiate our objects okay breathe life into them basically so the first one is the connection so the connection cd we want to create so you don't say dot create oh no you can but don't you say equals to what type of component it is it's an ADO connection dot create and it needs an owner someone who owns it and in this case it's going to be the data module that owns it and that's why I want us to differentiate between the names. So it's the data module CD. That so it's going to exist on the data module CD. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing for the ADO table, and that's going to equal to the T the T ADO table dot create not free create create. And that's also going to be owned by the data module CD because it's going to exist on that data module. And then our data source will do the same thing. So data source uh, is going to equal to a T data source dot create. And that also will exist on the data module CD. Okay, so there we go. That's our, first, that's our next step. We've created our objects. Now we're going to set up our connection properties so set up our connection so let's go into it boom so we're going to scroll down a little bit here so the first thing is we need to do the connection string so con cd dot connection string there should be a connection to there we go now that's equals to some sort of string so we need to write down all the code for it so i'm going to write it in advance because it's quite a bit so i'm going to pause the video here so you can so you can see the, the end result so yeah, we've got our connection string. It's quite a long string to write out. So there you can see it's set by the JET. Um, the data source is the CD. So the, our, our database, CD database is currently in the same folder as the Delphi files. So we can just make the data source equals to that CD. If you have it in a particular folder, then you need to specify that folder and that path. Um, we want it to be read write and then you write your whole persist security blah 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 so all of that's written over there now that's quite a long little thing to remember and I don't actually remember it either so what I my little tip here whenever I do that connection string I actually just I cheat a little bit I actually go and get an ADO connection not an SQL connection an ADO connection I go and I put one on and I actually go and see if I can create the uh, connection string uh, through this and if I and I'll just copy it so I'll we'll build it over here so we will build it boom, boom, boom. and I'll use jet because that's the one we want we want to go find uh, the database which is in that folder there's the CD database and then I delete all the stuff because I don't want anything that's beforehand there we go delete all that stuff boom, boom. take away the admin and the blank test it to see if it works yes it works advance make sure it's read write and so there I've got all my settings and then I just copy all of this stuff over here and that's what I put as my connection string so just copy that and paste that in so if you want to cheat that's what you can do so you don't have to remember everything so that's what you do for the connection string boom fantastic the connection strings done and then we want to if you remember from the previous year, we want to set the login prompt we don't want to be log prompt to log in every time we can set it to false and that's it I think yeah and we must open it. It means open our connection. CD dot open. Make sure that it's live and that it's available to be opened. Okay. So that's our setting up our connection. Next, we're going to set up our table or tables, depending on how many you've got. If you've got multiple tables, then you need to do this for each one. TBL CD dot. We want to set up the. We need to connect the this ADO table to the ADO connection. So the connection must match con CD. So there's a connection now between the table and the connection. Now that we've got that connection, it will see the different table name. So tblcd.table name. We need to make that equal to one of the tables. Now this, I've got the database opened here. You can see there's a CD table and an owner table. So we want to connect it to the CD table. So over here, boom, go. it's equal to the CD table. It's not a great name for a table, but there we go, CD table. 
and then we've got it connected there. Um, if you've got multiple tables, then you would have to see if you have uh, multiple connections and or multiple connections connecting to the one connection and the different seat that'll have each one will have a different seat a table name obviously the other one could be owner so we've done the table name so that's all great and then we need to set up the data source now the data source is what we need if we want to have like the db grid or the db um the database uh, edit boxes and those type of things those if we want to use them we need to have a data source so the data source needs to connect its data set to the ADO table, which is TBL CD. If you've got multiple tables, then you need multiple data sources and each one will connect to the corresponding uh, ADO table. So that's done. And then we need, we, once we've got that, now we can actually open up our CD, boom. And there we go. So now it should be live and active and should be ready and waiting for us. So that's what we can do when it gets loaded, when that gets done. So our connection is very easy. So there are the different steps. Let's have a look. So we add some library files. We declare our objects that we're going to need. We create our objects. We set up the connection, set up the table, set up the data source, and open. Once that's done, we move over to our unit file over here. Boom, not there. Over here. Boom. So there's our program. Boom. I'm going to add a DB grid so we can see if it's actually connecting. So there's my DB grid. Do, 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 do. So there's a nice little DB grid. And I'm going to give it a nice little name. Let's call it DB Grid CD Table. I'm going to call it DB Grid CD Table. Yeah, so there we go. DB Grid CD Table. Now, when we need this to connect to the data source, so when would that happen? Now, it would be something when the when it gets created, like on the form or something like that. So if I come here to the form, or, or, um, I don't want to do it when the form gets activated or, or created because that's going to be uh, we don't know if the, the data module has been created yet. And there's a sequencing issue that you've got to remember. So I'm going to do it when it's on show. That's probably the best one. So on show, we're going to connect uh, data module, connect database. So I'll just do that there. So now this will be on the show. When the form gets shown, then it'll do this little bit. And for this little bit, we need to actually say, okay, my DB grid that we've got, DB grid CD, its data source needs to equal to the data source over here, which is on, where is it? It's on, no, not there, it's on the, boom, on this little thing, on the data module CD. But if I come here and type in data module CD, it goes, we don't even know what this thing is. That's because we don't actually, our unit one isn't actually connected to the DMCD because we haven't included it here. So let's include DMCD underscore U. And then we have, there we go, it sees it now, boom, that's fantastic. And then I can say dot, and now I have access to all of the components that were dynamically created there. And I want to connect it to the data source, and we can do that, and let's just run it and see if it works. We should see some results in our DB grid. It should show us the table, and boom, there we go, we can see it. The only problem is that these fields aren't very nicely, you can't space them out very nicely. Um, so let's make some changes here. First of all, make that a bit lower, make that a bit lower. So what I'm gonna do, once I've done the connection, we can actually change those those DB grid, uh, DB grid, we can change those, those columns. I can say dot, columns yes columns there we go and square bracket now the first column is zero dot width and we can set the width of them so we can set that to like a 20 and i'm just going to do a couple of them just so we can see that it's actually changing them so i'm just going to paste that a couple of times so the, that's the first column is column one i'm mean, column zero then column one column two column three and we want let's make that 80 let's make that 80 let's make that 50. And we should see a change in the size when we load now. So, oh, there we go. Obviously, you can change them. You can make them a bit bigger. But there you can see already this change in the size. So you can adapt those values to be more appropriate for your scenario. Okay. So that's basically how to do the connection. Yeah. So I'm going to do a little extra thing after now. But just if you're stuck on anything that we've done, just go back, just pause the video at that particular point, and then you can see what the code is. Now this little bit is just a quick little bit that's unrelated to what we've just done, but it needs what we've done in order to do it. 
Um, sometimes when you make changes to your database, um, you want to undo those changes just for testing sakes. Um, so what I've got is a restore database button, which is going to basically, if I make a mistake, I can restore the database to its original state. Um, so that's what I want this, this button to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is there's my database, the, that one. I'm actually going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to control copy and paste it. And I'm going to call the second version of it backup. So there we go. I've got database backup. So there we go. So that's my first thing I'm going to do. Next thing, I've got a little button here. Uh, before I get to the button, I'm going to go to the data module and I'm going to create a procedure, a public procedure over here. I'll just make a public procedure, call it procedure restore DB. Okay, that's all it is. Restore DB, control shift C, and we can get to the code for the restore button. Now, what I'm going to need to do here, if I want to Basically, if I make a mistake and I want to get the database back to its original state. Okay, so the first thing is I need to close that table that we're busy with. So that connection, that uh, ADO connection needs to be closed. So um, the con connection, I think it's con CD dot, and then we're going to close it. So we close it. Then I want to actually destroy the table dot destroy it destroy the table because we don't need it anymore we can destroy the table and then I'm going to delete the file and here is where you write the name of the file that you want to delete and it's the CD database I don't know what it's actually I don't know. let's get the exact spelling you must get the exact spelling so there it is I'm going to copy it so we get it exactly so boom there we go delete it then we want to make a copy we want to copy the file and we need a few things that we want to copy. Which file do we want to copy? We want to copy the backup file. Okay, that's the file we want to copy. And then you put down what name do you want to make it? We want to give it its original name because we deleted the first one. And then we need a Boolean variable. Yeah, I'm just going to call it B fail. So we don't have a B fail. B, B fail. So let's just make a B fail. It's just another parameter that it needs. So I'm going to make that a Boolean. So there we go. So copy file. Now copy file doesn't work. Why? Because we don't have a particular library file called the Windows. We need to be able to interact with Windows. So we put Windows there. Ah, now copy works. So we've done our copy. That's great. So now we've done that. So that's all working. And then we need to redo this connection, which is a problem because I don't want to rewrite this code. But this is all in this procedure. So I'm just going to call this procedure again. So I'm saying, hey, data module, boom data module setup but it needs a sender who sent it well let's make it the data module db sent it okay data module deep not C, data module cd sent it i think that's the date there we go so that's set up so there we go so that's done boom so we've done that so now we go to our button yay we had a button so now i want to be able to call that restore db button so what i'm going to do is i can't just type in restore you see it doesn't recognize it doesn't so I need to access the data module dot data module CD dot now I have access to it. restore it and then I need to actually redo this part as well so I'm actually need to call the connect database option again so connect uh, I'll type it in connect yes connect database and this needs to send um, who's sending it I'm gonna make uh, this form the sender so all the button btn restore is sending this request so I th so basically this will go to this part over here it will close destroy make a copy and redo the setup and then it'll come back here and redo this part as well so if it doesn't give any error messages then we know that it's correct so if we made any changes deleted something oh i actually want to i made too many mistakes let me get back the original database you do that and it looks like everything worked. It should be fine. So that's how you can do your own restore database button. For more videos in this video series, as well as other stuff on Delphi content, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave us a like or leave us a comment because we love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.